In this video, I'm gonna talk about the things that I have stopped doing and stopped buying both from a financial perspective uh, of being very intentional and very frugal with how I spend my money and from a minimalist perspective where I've been trying to be less consumeristic. If you guys are new to my channel, I talk about stuff like this all the time. So if that's something that interests you, which probably is because you clicked on this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Going out to eat. Now the average commercially prepared meal in the US costs about $13 and I try to keep my meals at around $2 because I'm cheap that way. But uh, I don't just eat ramen and like crap. In fact, I, I don't think I've ever had ramen. I've also never had a Pop-Tart or Doritos. I always try to cook at home and be prepared. When I used to work out of the house, I always brought lunches, but now uh, I, I almost never leave the house, so. And a lot of people think that it's quicker or easier to go out to eat, but by the time you drive to a place, you wait to be seated, you order something, they cook it, they bring it out, you eat the meal, you wait for the check, you finally get out of there, you drive home. It's generally quicker to have a couple, like five minute, 10 minute dinners that you can cook at home that are relatively healthy and relatively cheap. I actually did a video on my favorite five minute meals if you guys wanna check that out. For me, it's just not worth the time or the money. I don't have consumer debt. And that's not just because I make coffee at home. 80% of Americans have some form of consumer debt. And the average person is in $38,000 worth of debt. And that is not including mortgages. While I do use credit cards to get the sign up bonuses, I am super, super careful to avoid any type of debt that I can. Now, besides my house, which I do have a mortgage on, I have no other debt. And I try to make sure that I never buy anything unless I have the cash to buy it. So if I buy something with my credit card, I wanna make sure that I could have bought it with cash, but I'm choosing to get the points on the credit card because I know that I can pay it off at the end of the month. I actually pay attention to opportunity costs. Now, a lot of people don't even know what opportunity costs is, but it's pretty simple. It can go with money, or time. If I spend an hour playing video games or watching TV, I missed out on the opportunity to spend that hour earning money or learning something. Now that doesn't mean I don't play video games a lot, but that is not the point. But that does mean I am super, super cautious about what I will spend my money on because if I spend $10 or $20 going out to eat, that could have been $100 or $200 like five or 10 years from now, depending on how I invest that. It also makes me think about what is the best value I can get for each dollar? Will this bring me enough happiness that I would go and work for an hour, for two hours, for five hours in order to have this thing or this experience? And sometimes the answer is yes, but other times, uh, I wouldn't go and work an hour so that I can buy a t-shirt just the happiness doesn't line up I like to just spend as little money as possible so that I don't have to work all that much because you know I'm lazy like that I don't impulse buy stuff as a minimalist I try not to have a lot of stuff in my house don't pay any attention to this bookshelf but also as a frugal person I don't like to impulse buy stuff because that's generally expensive and you regret it afterwards. This is such a common thing and I've had friends who have bought cars like new Teslas on impulse, which having a Tesla isn't a bad thing. I want one at some point in life. Hopefully once we hit half a million subscribers, hit the subscribe button, but buying it on impulse when you cannot afford it is not a great decision. Also, you probably shouldn't get tattoos on impulse but it, it's made so easy nowadays with one click shopping on Amazon. You forget what you ordered when stuff shows up at your house. That's happened to me before or on bigger purchases. When you look at it as it's only $20 a month, it's only 50 or a hundred or $300 a month. That's not that bad, but it's a huge amount when it adds up over time. If you don't think that through. So I'm just trying to make sure that almost everything that I buy, I wait at least a week up to a month to make that decision to buy it. Unless it's like an absolute necessity or, I ask someone and be like, hey, what do you think about getting this? And they'll be like, no, that's stupid. I'm like, oh, okay. So, yeah. Overspend on a house. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little worried that the camera was gonna fall off the house, but we made it. It's so common for people to overspend on a house so that they can show off, so that they feel accepted, so that they have the white picket fence in the right neighborhood. And while having somewhere nice to live is super important, it's something that I uh, have been very cautious about because generally it's gonna be one of your biggest expenses, generally around 30% of your budget. So I've done everything that I could in order to keep that as low as possible. Ugh. 
I've been very cautious to not buy more house than I need and even uh, been house hacking, which is just the idea of buying a multi-unit property with a low percentage down loan, living in one unit, renting the other ones out, and that's how I've been able to buy three houses in the past three years, multi-families, not houses, uh, and live in some really cool places while spending almost no money to do it. And while that's not gonna work for everybody, uh, generally your house, your car, uh, and your food are your biggest expenses. So if you can do anything that you can to those big three, that will save you a ton of money and you won't have to worry as much about the little stuff. I don't spend money on late fees. Now the average person spends around $7 a month on bank fees alone, and there are tons of other fees out there. So I just try to be careful to never spend money if I don't have to, especially on things like that where it's just going to a bank and I don't wanna support a bank, I'd rather support somebody else or myself. That also goes along with speeding tickets and things like that where I'd rather be somewhere like a minute or three minutes later than have you know the risk of getting a speeding ticket. So anything where I don't need to pay, I ain't gonna pay. I focus on income, and yes, I know that everybody focuses on income, but I think this is something that is often neglected in the frugal uh, community. At a certain point, you can only cut your expenses so low, so that's why I focus on having side hustles and diversifying my income and trying to grow that as much as possible. I've always tried to have multiple jobs and side hustles going on and then try to live off just one of those incomes. So right now I have real estate income, I have YouTube income, uh, I do some acting on the side, so I have that income. also have investments, but I've never really sold any so I don't really make anything from that but I'm always trying to optimize my income and diversify it as much as possible owning a dog I know this is probably a little controversial uh, but the average cost of owning a dog is between fourteen hundred and forty three hundred dollars per year now I realize uh, for some people they they bring happiness and that is great but for me personally uh, we had a dog when I was a kid it wasn't a great dog it kind of ruined the experience for me uh, and I just don't want to spend that type of money on top of the cost of owning a pet there is a large time commitment as well we've also been trying to travel more in the past couple of years uh, so there there is that as well a lot more responsibility so at this point in my life I, I just don't think it is a wise decision even though it's very common and I'm not saying it's a bad thing but for me it's not something that I want to do if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe on the road to 100k and I'll see you next week